I am using is a Gamagatsu B10S in size 6. And I'm making about 8 wraps with a .025 size lead wire and pushing it up towards the rear of the hook. The thread I'm using is Vivas 140 power thread in brown. Start your thread in front of the lead wraps and make a few loose wraps over the wire, then a few tighter ones to cover it before cutting off the waist. So this is a dubbing called Arctic Wind. Pull out a sparse amount of it and pull it apart in your fingers a few times to align the fibers. Now tie it in right behind the lead wraps. Then pull the forward facing fibers rearward and tie them in as well. Wet your fingers and stroke the fibers to make them thinner. Now make a dubbing loop and bring your thread to just past the lead wire before putting on your twister. Now pull out quite a bit of white arctic wind and prepare it as well. Put it in your dubbing loop and make sure it's evenly distributed along the loop. Then twist it up multiple times. Now, this dubbing gets really bunched up in the twist, so you'll have to pick it out. Also, it's kind of tough to pick out as well. Just take your time and make small picks until it's fully picked out. Once it is fully picked out, make touching wraps up the hook shank with your dubbing, pulling the fibers rearward with every wrap. Capture the loop when you reach your thread and clip off the waist. Then pull everything rearward and make a few tight wraps to lock that loop in place. Now for some more picking. Again, this stuff tends to want to get trapped easier than other dubbings I've used. Now prepare a small amount of tan arctic wind and tie it in on top of the white dubbing, right in the center of the bunch. Pull the forward fibers rearward and tie those in as well. Then do the same thing with some brown arctic wind. Now create another dubbing loop and bring your thread up to the hook eye. Prepare some dubbing and put it in your dubbing loop evenly. Then I like to cut a slight angle at the top of the dubbing to make it easier to dub on. Now twist up your loop. Again, pick out your loop, and then start wrapping it on your hook, making a dubbing head. Don't forget to pull the fibers rearward with every wrap. This is a tough spot, because if you add too much, you crowd the hook eye, but not enough, and the head just isn't bushy enough. So capture your loop and trim off the waist. Then pull all the fibers rearward and tie up onto the loop a little bit. Now pick out the head and stroke the fibers rearward. Make a few more wraps to ensure a smooth head and whip finish your fly. I like adding this UV resin at the head to keep it secure. Pick out the fly once again to really ensure that there are no trap fibers. then take it off the vise for trimming. To trim, I like to flatten out the fibers and fan them out a bit. Then make an angle cut from about where the hook ends to about where the middle point of the tail is. Make another angle cut on the other side. Then if you want, cut some of the errant strands, but this isn't necessary. And there we go, a fat head minnow pattern that only uses one type of material. As you can see, it has nice movement in the water, and I would say this is probably best fished with slow jerks and slight pauses, but it also has a decent slow steady retrieve as well. And with really hard quick jerks, the fly will give a side to side kind of action as well. Well, thanks for watching. As always, check the description section where I listed all the materials I used on this fly. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.